Democratic candidate Joe Biden has pulled ahead of Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, a key state in the U.S. presidential race. Biden is leading by nearly 10,000 votes with 98 percent counted. If he takes the state, he will win the election. Philadelphia's election commissioner, though, says the final count there could take several days. Earlier, he edged ahead of the Republican rival in Georgia, Another key battle state where a recount will now be held for his take on what's going on down in the United States. We're now joined by former U.S. Ambassador to South Africa, Patrick Gaspard. A very good evening to you, Ambassador. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak to us. Now, uh, your comment on this, people have said Americans, politicians in particular, are prone to what is now being illuminated with these developments as exaggerated claims of the beauty and the wonder of American democracy. So looking at how how things are unfolding. What are your thoughts? Is this a, a, a fair shake on uh, what is going on? Well, first of all, thank you so very much for having me on at this critical moment, not just for the U.S., but for the globe. So I appreciate the skepticism that one would have about uh, U.S. democracy following the delays in counts and the reprehensible statements that have been made about uh, a rigged election by the president of the United States. I would just remind everyone, though, if you look at participation, the U.S. just set an astonishing record for the greatest number of votes ever cast in a presidential election. We'll be somewhere north of 150 million votes cast. That's astounding. And if you look at the percentage of young people who voted, and you could compare it um, against the, the lack of participation that we've seen by young people in many parts of the world and the lower participation you had recently in your South African national elections, the trend towards inclusion uh, that is exciting and that ought to be uh, celebrated. It is true that there are real problems with the system in the U.S. The Electoral College really has to be examined when you consider that Democrats have now won seven of the eight last popular votes but have not always been given uh, the White House. That's, that's, that's a challenging circumstance that needs to be uh, examined. Uh, and I just would remind uh, your viewers that we're also operating under a global pandemic that's required over 20 states to change the way that they vote. So it's natural that there'd be some kind of delay in counts. But the system uh, is uh, working uh, in terms of giving clear expression to the preference of most Americans, which right now seems to be Joe Biden. OK, let's talk about representativity and uh, the system itself, how well it's working. So there's a view that the current election is exposing two very significant existing flaws in American de democracy which runs completely contrary to the treasured one-man, one-vote standard. The swing states and presidential majorities, uh, as well as uh, the role of Senate. So let's just first start with uh, the role of Senate. Your point of view on that, the nomination of a justice to fill the Supreme Court as seat of... Uh, Ruth uh, Badger Ginsburg was uh, something that became so much of a controversy seen as a fundamental flaw because it's disproportionate to what they see as the undemocratic nature of Senate. Yes. Well, you know, one should understand that in the American system, a tremendous amount of power accrues to the majority. Uh, and uh, rules have been changed in the U.S. Senate that makes it so that you no longer need to have 60 votes in the Senate in order to confirm uh, a justice of the Supreme Court, which is problematic given that these are lifetime appointments. Uh, the current leader, Mitch McConnell, uh, was the person who championed uh, these changes. And he's also the person who denied President Obama an opportunity to fill a Supreme Court seat, even though he had many, many more months before uh, the election than Donald Trump had. So there's a way that power accrues uh, to the majority. Uh, there's an asymmetry uh, of power there, and rules changes are going to be necessary to be examined uh, for uh, the future. There's no doubt about that. Democrats have an additional challenge now because uh, of uh, the way the contest played out. They did not win as many Senate seats as they had hoped and had expected to to regain the majority. Uh, now it's clear there'll be two special elections in Georgia in January of this year. That will determine the majority, but it's going to be a steep climb for Democrats uh, in uh, that case. Each branch of government, the Senate, Congress, the presidency, has its own unique authority uh, and leveraging uh, that power for the purpose of the common good uh, is the role that Joe Biden is going to now have to uh, take on, the mandate, the mission, uh, in order to make this a more perfect union. But the flaws are evident. And I want to talk about the concept of uh, 
uh, the popular vote. The president of the United yes. States is not elected by a popular vote. Rather than the president is elected by winning 270 or more votes in the Electoral College. But I want to understand, given the issues that have been at the fore, and it's not for us to judge, obviously it's up to the individual voter to make a decision based on how they uh, see the, the country being governed, the economy being managed, especially this uh, pandemic. So just explain mm -hmm. to us so what we're seeing here and uh, whether or not it is in line with these democratic principles that we talk about that uh, should be aspired towards. Well, let's first acknowledge that uh, Joe Biden is on the cusp of winning both the popular vote and dominating the Electoral College. So it's important to know that that's about to be aligned and that's, that's occurring now uh, and will be resolved uh, in the next hours, uh, maybe the next uh, 24 hours. That's the first thing. The second thing is uh, many of us have pointed out for a very, very long time the fact that uh, despite the fact that Democrats receive more votes for Senate, Senate candidates and congressional candidates, uh, they have less seated uh, than Republicans uh, do because of the way votes are distributed uh, in the country. There are challenges with gerrymandering, with the way lines are established, and the Electoral College itself is a systemic structural barrier to true overall democratic participation. Uh, we do, all of us, share this notion, this concept of one person, uh, one vote. Uh, it's how our system defines itself and projects itself to the world. But the Electoral College really thwarts uh, that uh, that principle, uh, that commonly held and shared value, and in my estimation, really needs to be uh, interrogated. There are many activists in America who have been working towards a national popular vote, uh, and it's a state-by-state -state, um, uh, campaign that they're uh, undertaking, and that uh, will not be reconciled uh, anytime, uh, anytime soon, usually important questions. For me, though, it's more important to focus on this moment, on the Joe Biden will be the next president. He will have a popular vote and an electoral vote mandate, and he's going to reestablish America's role in the world. I know that my friends in South Africa have been hungering for uh, an America to partner with uh, on health care, on economic inclusion, on uh, peace uh, and security. Uh, and on uh, human rights practice globally, that opportunity is coming again with a new administration. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Ambassador, because it is an important thing for us to understand how Americans vote. So let's talk about this, uh, this, uh, the swing states there. Georgia, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Nevada, Alaska have not been called. But for us to understand the weight that these uh, states have, enjoy. Uh, some say that there's a danger of these states simply, um, you know, twisting, manipulating policy so that it is in line with uh, uh, the, for instance, what the Democrats or the Republicans want at that time. What are your thoughts on that? And I ask this so that, as I say, you continue to help us understand how Americans vote, especially on those issues that you mentioned. Foreign policy, will uh, they, do Americans want there to be stronger, better relations with South Africa, for instance? Yes, I, I welcome this opportunity. When I when I had the privilege of serving in South Africa, I think I received more questions about the Electoral College than anything else in my time there. You know, the, the whole notion of swing states and non-swing states all hangs on the Electoral College itself. If the, electoral, if the Electoral College did not exist, was disbanded tomorrow, then politicians um, of, of both parties when running for the presidency would have to campaign in all states uh, because it would be about the accrual of mass votes across the board. Uh, so I really do think that the Electoral College creates a distinct disadvantage for states that are neglected in the uh, political litigation, and that has implications in policy. We're seeing that now. Uh, Donald Trump said the most astonishing things about st stimulus and recovery uh, during uh, the COVID debates, where he was making clear distinctions between red states that favor Republicans and blue states that favor Democrats and the swing states. That is not how any governing executive should be uh, organizing policy. It shouldn't be the case in South Africa, should not be the case uh, in uh, the U.S. You cannot have that kind of prejudicial uh, favor or disfavor for states uh, based on uh, voting uh, outcomes. We saw in the kind of steel tariffs and the kind of trade um, uh, negotiations that okay. Donald Trump lifted up that he was trying to favor one region of the country over another. Ambassador, thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. Former U.S. Ambassador to South Africa, Patrick Gaspar. So